Hey everybody, this is the EFJ Show. I like to say, my, my, my. And I got a guest today, and we're gonna talk about <coughs> air cookies. We're gonna talk about spiritual belief. This man right here is so deep. But before I start, I just wanna say, welcome to the EFJ Show, brother. Thank you. Because, you know, I gotta talk to you in a different type of way. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't be buck wild with you <laughs> because, you know, uh, right. you, uh, you're a good brother. But anyway, thank you. Minister Tommy, yes, sir. tell us about yourself and your current profession. Well, my current profession, I believe, has always been my profession. I believe that... Uh, the ministry was something that God called me forth from Him mm -hmm. and sent me in the world to do. Um, it didn't start out that way. As mm -hmm. you mentioned about Saul on the road to Damascus, um, that's what I've been on and okay. still is on in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, in that journey, being one of many men, uh, black or white, um, experienced trials and tribulations, some being drugs, alcohol, things of that. It all came through disobedience to God. So that uh, my current profession is ministry, ministering to people the Word of God mm -hmm. uh, based off of my experiences with God mm -hmm. um, through my disobedience and that is known as sin. And it's a hard word for a lot of people to say, but the truth of the matter is uh, all these issues that we have in the world today with body, souls, and everything mm. is, originates from sin. So that is my profession. My profession is the Word of God. Your profession is the Word of God. Yes. You know what? One thing I can say about you, man, you're a humble man. And I mean, I don't know, you talk to a lot of ministers, and they just like the shade tree mechanic, I say, because you don't feel no or none in it anointing I say because but when I talk to you you feel that anointing of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you and I believe uh, I truly believe that this place is filled with the anointing because of your presence yeah. my brother and I could say what when when did you feel that God had a calling for you to be honest with you I know now I didn't know then the way things were when I was a kid, I was kind of like the black sheep. All my brothers were slim and good looking and women recognized them, they were athletic. I was a short, fat guy, I'm still chunky and um, had a tooth missing in the front of my mouth and I had long hair and everything, but I was what they call a mother's boy, mm. you know? And um, I don't know, it was like love was always with me but as I grew older, I thought that love meant sex and girls and all of that, you know, but I didn't realize it was a safekeeping love, a love that God used to nourish me during times where I felt like I was the black sheep and mm -hmm. times where I felt like I should have things that other people had, even as a grown man, and I didn't have them. And um, God was showing me something greater. So. That's when I began to realize it as a young boy, and it came into fruition uh, as I grew, when I misused the Word of God, mm. you know, to talk to women, to gain access to people's feelings or whatever. Um, I thought it was me, you know. So yeah. I was, the first person you deceive in life is yourself. The best salesmen are the best salesmen because they believe what they're selling. The thing about it was that I believed the Word of God. I just misused the right, Word of God. Right, right. And so it was uh, my own prison I created. So you said you was David out in the fields, sheep and the sheep. Absolutely. You, he was a scrawny little man. Yeah. He wasn't fat. You said you was fat. But he was out there sheeping, sheeping the, the guilt, the, the, out in the fields, dirty and stinking. And when the anointing of the Holy Spirit came to him. <laughs> yes, Lord. So you, can you compare yourself to David in a sense? Yeah, I was living in a place in Ocala called Spring Manor. And I had fancied myself uh, 
drug dealer, well, they're peddling poison and a murderer, so to speak. It's really what it was. And um, I found myself sitting on some concrete outside of my sister's apartment about four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I was looking at some cowboy boots I had on called Justin's and you like your I used to have, boots. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and um, I used to have long hair and I had just cut my hair that day. And I was sitting there just looking and I had some Marlboro red cigarettes and the Holy Spirit just clearly spoke to me. It wasn't audible, but it was audible inside of me. It, mm -hmm. it shook me in a sense that it made me be absolutely still and start talking to God. And it spoke to me like this, I'm going to kill you in this. Mm. You are going to die in this. Because I had been freebasing all night, and it's where your eyes are so popped, your pupils look like starburst around them. You can't close your eyes, you know, and uh, you can't hold anything. Your hands literally shake if you try to do anything. And, um, and I became very fearful. I became very fearful, and I said, Lord, don't let me die like this. Don't let me live like mm. this. Well, I feel it up there, you know. And so I answered the call to answer your question. That's what it's about. It's about hearing God's voice and answering the call. We hear God's voice every day, every one of us. We hear it now. That's why we're still here. Mm -hmm. That's how you get up in the mornings. You know. So for me, that was the moment uh, the real change began when I answered the call. I heard God's voice. I answered the call. You know. And that's what David did. See, he answered the call. Yeah, see, he did answer the call. But tell me something, Pastor, uh, Minister Tommy. Uh, when was that pivotal point in your life when you was freebasing or uh, when you felt that uh, when you was out there and when you felt that cold, you said, you know what? I'm tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> yeah. Um. That happened long before I ever picked up drugs. I was tired of being sick and tired. In fact, the drugs was like cobwebs at first. You know, if you ever get caught up in a spider web, you kind of, but it's always annoying. But mm -hmm. when I tried to take it off, it was like a suit of chains, you know. That's when I realized that I was really tired of being sick and tired because Richard Pryor said, if you've been freebasing more than a week, you're hooked. And so mm -hmm. I tried to put it off and I couldn't. And that's when I began to realize more and more I was sick and tired because I became afraid, but I couldn't stop because it was a brain high. It uh, satisfied all the senses. So um, that moment was uh, the exact moment. I couldn't tell you because those moments were consistent. I want you to do something. I want you to look into that camera right there. I want you to inspire somebody that was going through right now to tell them you can make it. And we're going to our first break. Absolutely. And he's right. You can, but you can't do it on your own. It's by the grace of God. In order to do that, you have to hear the word of God. You have to hear God. In the book of Mark, chapter 12, 29 through 31, Jesus starts out saying, O Israel, hear, the Lord is thy God. And that's what you must do. You have to pick that word up and you have to hear God, not listen you can listen with your ear, but you need to hear with your heart. And that means to obey God. So that's what I would say is to get with yourself first. Be honest that you have a problem and then ask for help from someone who has experienced what you've experienced. And start with God's God's grace and mercy. It is real. God is real and his mercy does endure forever. And you know what, people? We'll be back with more of Minister Thomas Davis from Ocala, Florida. We'll be back for more on the EFJ Show. Let's talk about it. All right, performing his next song, Irreplaceable, from South Columbia, South Carolina, this is Zach. I will be lying, 
All them times I see you crying It wasn't because of me Baby, gotta let you know I ain't even got an ego Stick it with me, it's a go We can just keep it on the go So nobody got enough Don't need another you One is all I need I sit wrong with two You're irreplaceable Oh no, 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 no You're irreplaceable Hey everybody, welcome back to the ELJ Show. Let's talk about it. I'm your host, <laughs> Ernest Faust Jr. Today's guest, we have Minister Tommy Davis, all the way from Ocala, Florida, y'all. And he just took us into a break. He gave what a word you gave to the people of God out there looking into that camera. You looked right into that camera. I felt, I felt like a deal caught up in the hair light. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. you really made that, uh, you really said something that was special to the people. But anyway, welcome back to the ELJ Show. Thank you. And we on this, second, this, uh, this section here, we're going to talk about your invention, you and your brother invention. We think called air cookies. Okay. And I would like to know what is an air cookie? <laughs> Most people would, but first, it's not my invention. I'm actually the uh, sales director of the Central okay. Florida Division. Um, but an air cookie actually looks like a cookie. It's uh, a little less than a quarter of an inch thick, has a hole in the center, and they come in uh, a variety of colors and scents. Name some scents. Oh, one is mango, mm. tangerine. Mm. 
uh, African eyes. African uh, ice. Yeah, African ice. Oh, ice. Caribbean blossom, ice. tropical rain, mm. uh, chocolate grape, lifesaver, which is one of my favorites. That and the um, tangerine. Uh, you got one called uh, linen, summer linen. It's an awesome smell. Uh, I could go on. And how, how, how long do they last? They last up to 30 days. And uh, when you purchase them, they're in uh, little packages, plastic packages. Mm -hmm. And um, after about two weeks, you can open them up and they will dry out. And then after that, if you're doing laundry, you can take it and put it on a sock and throw it in a dryer. Wow. And it'll make your clothes smell fresh. Um, you can put them in sock drawers, uh, your closets, bathrooms, 10 by 15 bathrooms, amazing. Your car is awesome. Yeah. You don't have to light them, you know what I mean? You don't have to put them on fire. They don't take any electricity. Uh, they're organic. Um, they're not edible, though. That's for sure, even though they are air cookies. Um, they're beautiful as in color, as in smell. It's absolutely, it's actually aromatherapy uh, from my point of view because... Why? Well, because when you, it's one of the senses, like your eyes, beauty is an eye to behold it. I look at something, or a young lady, or a car, or something, and I may think it's beautiful, you may not think that. So the, it's the same way with smells. Something smells good to me may not smell good to you. Correct. Okay? But it does something to you, like bacon, or fried chicken, or a woman's perfume walking by you in a breeze. You mm -hmm. know, you're like, you know, you want to follow, or something like that. Um, you walk in Walmart, the bakery, all these things are done. Popcorn in the movies back in the day, they, right. you know, everything is up front. And that's what air cookies are. It's up front, man. When you smell them, even if you mix them all together, it doesn't smell bad. It just smells wonderful. I mean, wow. you literally go like, this smells amazing. There it is. They smell amazing. You know, I could testify to that because when you sent me a sample of those, I didn't know you were going to send me that many. <laughs> I really appreciate well, it, though. Absolutely. And uh, I, I could tell you one thing. Uh, my favorite was the lightsaber Say what? and the mango. <laughs> I mean, you put them in the car. Matter of fact, I got one in the car now, cinnamon. Yeah. I mean, you have so many different variety of uh, flavor. They actually, I'm not pumping you up, but I'm just letting you know they are a good, strong product Thank versus uh, the little tree. Just as strong as the little tree to hang in the car. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Better man. than. Be yeah, because you, you, you could use it after it dried up. Yeah, but the thing is, like I said, they last uh, up to 30 days, some even longer. Yeah, um, some even longer. We have canisters also, and I had a canister in my car, and this is how I know they can last even up to six months, okay, because we have some called extra large XLs. They're a little thicker and a little bigger, mm -hmm. and they come in these metal canisters, some with a clear uh, lid. And I was riding around in my car with it under the seat when we first came out with them, and I forgot it was there. And so one day, I don't know what I did, but anyway, it came out. I took the lid off, and it was so strong, and I, was, I closed it back up. So I decided to leave it off, and went to the store, yada, yada, came back. My car was amazing. A lady walked by and goes, what is that? And that's how I know, from experience, not on purpose, but from experience. It is an absolutely amazing product. I think so. Uh, how you plan on marketing, on how you market air cookers as a sales marketing manager? Well, by the grace of God, uh, here, um, I would flea markets in Ocala. Ocala is called horse country of the world, so to speak. Uh, so I go to flea markets, all these different things, streets, kids, elevators. I work for hotels and things of that nature. And I actually got on, a, on an elevator one time and just riding on the elevator. And people would be like, it smells so good in here. Mm. And I'd test it. I'd be like, how's this? No, that smells good. It's testing the product. It's believing in what you're selling. That's how I do it. I, that's how I market the product. I believe in the product. Same way I believe in the Word of God. I really believe it. And it's true. And later you, maybe they'll get to see that it's true. Well, that's, that's what my next question was, and I'm getting ready to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. um, how can people get in contact with you? Well, our website is called Great Little Things, and that's things with a Z, greatlittlethings.com. Mm -hmm. um, remember that's things with a Z and um, you look on there it's an amazing website my brother put together um, his, I hope he doesn't mind uh, 
his name's Russell, but we call him Ghost. <laughs> okay. and, and he's actually here, and that's why you don't see him. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghost, a little pun there, you can laugh. But anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you so serious, but, man. Yeah. Don't laugh. Yeah. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he's an amazing uh, brother, man. He really is. And he has a movement called I Am Movement, mm -hmm. and it stems with these air cookies. Wow. You know, so um, I would really like for you all to give it a shot, man. Oh, do you See have any yourself. samples to give out? Absolutely. Oh, good. Beautiful. Well, everybody. I, it's been an amazing time talking to Minister Tommy uh, Davis all the way from Ocala, Florida. And we talk about his air cookie. Y'all got to go out there and purchase these things. Uh, look, at a, look into it. Don't give a, give a brother a hand. Help him out. They do some good products. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Amen, man. And check Amen. him out in uh, Ocala when you're going through there, through the flea markets and things he goes to, and they uh, out there doing their thing. But anyway, I'd like to thank uh, Minister Tommy for being on my show today. And if you're out there need a word of advice or need some speaking engagement, invite him to your church, to your conference, to your workshop. Well, this is the ELJ Show. Let's talk about it. And I'm your host, Ernest Faust, Jr. And I truly believe that God is real. Amen. Amen.